Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and today we're going to talk about diagnostic tooling inside Visual Studio 2015. And I'm joined by three people who are brand new to the show. Welcome, guys. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. We've got Dan and Charles and Angelos. And since you're brand new to the audience, I'll let you introduce yourselves. Sure. So we are 3 PMs from the Visual Studio Diagnostics team. Um, Charles and I spend a lot of time working on the performance uh, tools in Visual Studio, mm -hmm. and Angelos is the guy for IntelliTrace. So Excellent. we're here to show you what's new. There have been, as a lot, you guys have done a lot of work in 2013, continuing to do more work in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, give us a, just a quick overview of um, kind of your, your goals. Are, are the tooling addressing new issues? Is mm -hmm. it just, it was time to do better tools? What, uh, what's kind of the high level guidance? Yeah, so we've been, in 2013, we did quite a bit of work on our profiling tools in Visual Studio. We essentially went from, you know, here to here, right? Mm -hmm. So we've added so many tools in Visual Studio 2013 and the updates. And uh, the big shift that we're making in 2015, and I'll go ahead and press F5 just to uh, show you what I mean, is that we're bringing the diagnostic tools into the debugging experience, right? So that you can get uh, more value out of the tools as a regular part of every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, F5 stepping through. And code. how much of this was driven by uh, the need for better diagnostic tooling in mobile apps, Windows 8 apps, Windows Phone apps, and how much of it is just everybody wants better diagnostic tooling regardless of what you're building? Well, so um, one of the big pieces of feedback we got about the, uh, the profiling tools is like, hey, these tools are great, you guys are making great progress, but um, one of the challenges is that uh, developers, first of all, don't know they exist because it's the separate set of tools here mm -hmm. in the Analyze menu that you have to go run, right. and it's sort of outside of your everyday workflow. Um, <clears throat> and also just want to have that constant reminder that the performance is there, and if you see something while you're developing, you can mm -hmm. quickly look at the diagnostic tools okay. and take a look and sort of... So to make it more part of the debugging process, it's not something you do. You debug your code, mm -hmm. make sure the code works, and then you go <laughs> check performance. Right. Now it's just something that you do as, as part of the normal workflow. Right. You keep That's an cool. eye on your performance while okay. you're debugging. It sort right. of reduces the barrier, makes it easier for yep. you to do that check and sort of don't put it off until later. Right. Um, the one last thing to forget, one last thing to run <laughs> exactly, out of time to do. Exactly. Yep. I also want to highlight that uh, the other major thing we've done with the Diagnostic Tools experience is that we've completely revamped the IntelliTrace UI, which Angelos will show us. Okay. Um, the IntelliTrace UI was um, a little bit unintuitive and difficult to use, and we've brought it all together into the Diagnostic Tools window with the, the performance tools so that we have one uh, really easy to use uh, experience for all of these sort of uh, cool. historical overtime time periods. Right. Excellent. Right. So uh, with that, uh, I'd like Angelos to come up and go ahead and show us what we've done with IntelliTrace in this release, and then right. we'll follow Excellent. up afterwards okay. with the performance. And we're stuff. using 2015 CTP5. Five. Five. Yeah. So this right. is the CTP5 release that uh, you can go and download uh, uh, Visual Studio's website today. Right. Um, and we'll be continuing to release new CTPs, which have even better versions of these tools um, as we keep refining and improving. Okay. So if you're using the 2015 preview and you see something that isn't in your build, that's why. Exactly. That's right. All right. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Let's take it away, Angelos. Angelos. Thanks, All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to debug a real application, and we're going to try and fix a real bug mm -hmm. using IntelliTrace. Cool. Um, this is the new experience in 2015. So for the first part of the demo, I'm going to go rather quickly through the UI and actually make use of the tool to fix the bug. And then I'm going to take some time to walk you through the actual new UI and right, um, cool. talk about each, uh, each of the elements. So what I have here is a very simple text editor written in WPF. And all it lets you do is open a file, make some changes, and save it. So I'm going to go ahead and do just that. I'll click the Open button. I'm going to pick a file. The contents don't really matter. Um, so I'm just going to scroll to the bottom, mm -hmm. and I'm going to make some edits. Now, when I click Save, what I notice is that my scroll bar went back up to the top, okay. and my mouse position has been lost. It's at the beginning of the file again. Okay. So let's say this is the bug I want to fix. That's a bug? That is a bug, <laughs> right? I would, I would hope okay. for the uh, mouse position to stay at the bottom All when right. I was making the edits. So using just a debugger, when I give this as a kind of interactive demo, most people say the first place I would look is the event handler of the save button. Sure. That makes sense. That's definitely what I would do too. Um, I can tell you that's not where the bug is. And the reason why I'm telling you this is this is a simple application. The bug is very simple. 
and it's kind of obvious that it's probably behind this button. But guess what? Even in those situations, the bug can be hiding somewhere else. Sure. So I'm not going to waste my time now setting a breakpoint, repeating these steps, and not getting to the root cause. Instead, what I will do is I'm just going to hit break all. Break all in Visual Studio is the same as making every thread hit a breakpoint. It just stops all threads. Oh, okay. And this gives me the ability to look at the data IntelliTrace has that collected. New in 2015? No, that actually has okay. been there for a while. It's right. just most people don't find a very good like use me. for it. <laughs> IntelliTrace <laughs> it is a very good okay. use for it. So now I'm just going to go through the table of events that IntelliTrace has collected, mm -hmm. and I'm going to try to look for something familiar to me. So the first thing I recognize is the clicked open yep. event. This is me just clicking on the open button that showed the open file dialog and then it opened the file I selected. So it makes sense when I see a file access and a file close event right after it. Yes. Because what typically happens is you open the stream, read the contents, close the stream. Therefore, right. two events. Then I see my clicked save event. Mm -hmm. That's me making the edits, scrolling to the bottom, making the edits, and then clicking save. So again, that's what I expected to see. But then, you accessed see. and closed and accessed and right. closed. So I'm going to say that that second access thinks that you opened it for the first time, and when you open something for the first time, it puts the cursor at the very top. Right? I mean, you already <laughs> you don't know, you have no idea what the code is. No, I don't. But and that you is just awesome. looked at that. Yeah. And you already have a much better hypothesis as to where this code, this bug, cool. could be we hiding. We did not in rehearse code. that, by the way. Not at all. <laughs> so even if this is not the root cause of the bug, it's still interesting to look yes, into. Yes, it's unexpected. It's exactly. It, it's telling me that that would be a place to look. Uh, precisely. Mm -hmm. Now, to be fair, if you get a really good logging framework and you put lots of trace messages, you can get something sure. similar to yeah. this. It's not going to be integrated, but it gets you the same kind of information. What I'm really interested now is, why do I get these two extra events that I don't expect? Right. If I was using just a logging framework, I'm kind of out of luck. I have to go to the code, put some breakpoints in various places mm -hmm. where there is a file access, and then repeat my testing steps. Instead, what I can do with IntelliTrace is I can just ask it. So if I select the first file access event and I click Activate Historical Debugging, so clicking Activate Historical Debugging makes my code editor take me to the line of code mm -hmm. that is responsible for generating this event. Okay. So here we are in the button save file underscore click, which is the event handler for the save button. So right. this is expected. Um, this is a using statement where it opens up the file to do the writing. So there's nothing here that I'm suspicious about. This looks normal. I'm assuming the close event is just going to point me to the end of the using statement where the stream is going to be closed. So I'm not going to bother with that. Um, instead, I'm going to go where we both decided that the interesting event is the second file access. Right. So I'm going to select that one, and I'm going to click Activate Historical Debugging. Now this time, uh -huh. My code editor, like you suspected before, is in the read file method. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes sense if I, everything gets reset if I reopen the file. But what I don't know right now is why is it getting called? Right. It makes no sense to me to click save and then call read file. So what I need here is help and from IntelliTrace. Probably with enough breakpoints and enough stepping, right. probably could have got to this point. Yes. But it was way faster looking at it here. Right. And yeah. this is a very simple application. Mm -hmm. Uh, reproducing the issue only takes a few seconds, so yes. you don't mind watching me do it over and over again. Right. But if this was more difficult to reproduce, or the application was just more complex mm -hmm. and it was much more difficult to put breakpoints, you can see how it might take you a little while yes. before you get to the exact same right. place that IntelliJ yeah. took you Here very you quickly. Just go to the code that caused that. That's right. Right. So the final piece of the puzzle is why is this getting called? Mm -hmm. And IntelliJ can help me by showing me historical call stack information. So if I just pin the call stack window, you can see that the title of the window has actually changed to say historical debugging. Mm -hmm. This is showing you the call stack as it was at that point in time when that line of code was executed. So this can help me answer the question, why does it get executed? Looking at the frames in the stack, I see there is an open file method getting called. Still not sure why open file would get called. Looking before it, it looks like open file gets called by on file changed. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we're picking up some file changes and we're resulting in opening the file, but I'm sure, still not sure why. And then there is an anonymous method that is kind of hitting the whole thing. So I'll just go to that method, see what this is all about. 
And here I can see that this is a event handler for a file system watcher object. Okay. This is actually part of the application's functionality. If I open up a file and somebody else edits the same file mm. and they save their changes, the application shows me a message saying, hey, if you save now, you're going to lose changes that somebody else has made, so be careful. So when you save the file, you're triggering the file watcher changed, which thinks that somebody else changed the file, doesn't Correct. understand that it was you that just changed the file That's you were right. working on, and says, hey, somebody randomly changed the file, on file change gets triggered, which then reopens it. Exactly. So it looks like I have a little bug here that it mm -hmm. doesn't filter out changes that are coming from my own edits. So this is a demo, so it's as simple as uncommenting something, but just to prove the point,